All right, so uh, in the previous videos with Trayvon, it was my apprentice helping me film, but now I'd like to include her into some of the coaching and mentorship that I want to provide for her in these particular videos. We've taken Trayvon through a number of exercises, particularly for helping fix some of the immobility and activation issues or intentional, I guess, tension that he was building in places such as his feet and his core. Uh, and what we established was there was this tension, immobility, tightness, lack of activation in those extreme positions. So what we want to do is go through a very comprehensive, methodical mobility screen or movement screen that'll help establish some of those end ranges of motion, tension, tightness, activation, and a number of postural, I guess, extremes, if you will. Uh, this particular exercise where he's lying in a side profile, you can kind of see from the video here, will allow him to learn how to navigate or use some of those particular tension points or the particular intentional positions he needs to have for internal rotation and external rotation of the hip relative to earning postural alignment. And what's the best thing about this particular exercise is he's taking the components of impact out of the equation when he's lunging, squatting, yada, yada, yada. The reception or inflammation that he's receiving throughout that body type or throughout those movements is causing the, the pain and more or less is stopping him from continuing his fitness journey. So we have to focus on these things and work on them uh, strategically. But what I want to do here is introduce this exercise and then what I'll do is I'll get Carrie to kind of uh, maybe go over some of the things we're looking for in particular to this particular uh, workout or workouts because there'll be two of them uh, integrated. So I'll get you to straighten this top leg here. All right. What he's going to do in this particular sequence, you can kind of see with the video here, is we want to get, I'm going to try to move this back a bit. There we go. We want to get this particular leg here as straight as possible through the profiles of his said posture. I'm going to need you to tuck your chin back behind you. Yeah. Okay, now what he's going to try to do is he's going to lift this leg, which he's already got lifted. He's going to try to turn this foot outward and turn this foot in an inward profile and touch in the inward profile. While he does that, he has to focus on this staying aligned, where he's not arching through his lower back. In fact, he's tucking his pelvis forward. This leg isn't creeping forward in front of the front leg, and his shoulder blades are staying more or less back in. Now, Kerry, do you know why we would be throwing this particular exercise into the equation? Because think about his foot in reaction to his space or a movement that he's creating. Mm, you're essentially getting the entire leg to work up the chain and working on a little bit more internal and external rotation. Intentionally, mm -hmm. right? Where he's learning how to get those internal extremes, external extremes without the presence of impact. Because when it carries walking, when he's walking, when I'm running, when I'm changing direction, lunging, there's impact involved, okay? So these are pretty, epic exercises as he's finding they're pretty difficult. I don't need a lot of repetitions for this stuff. It's like three to five, okay? So um, let's do the second one if you remember. That's where the knees come together, okay? Mm. Yeah. So I'm gonna let you go through it and then maybe this time we'll get Carrie to uh, talk one? us through what he's earning in this one. Now, I'll give you a hint, Carrie. What we're learning or earning here is internal hip mobility. What controls internal hip mobility, do you remember? Yeah. So more of your oblique. TBA. TBA. See, he's also a, a scholar. An astute learner of the training principles. Okay, so when he gets into this particular position, he's going to be earning a lot of internal hip mobility control. So in order to do that, he's in the right idea, but what we're going to do with those knees a little bit more so we're going to tuck them up underneath us. In line with the hip joint, so a little bit higher. And remember when he's in this said position, he's not tucking his heels behind him because then he's gonna leverage arching through his lower back. He's actually gonna keep this at a 90 and a 90 degree position. So this is a very common exercise. The first one we start off with is the clam shell. But then we comprehensively add a whole bunch into it. So keep going through it. And that foot comes off. I'm gonna squeeze this knee into that knee. Good. Now it's imperative that when he's doing this, he's gonna straighten this top arm. He's gonna keep it straight. And if he can, he's gonna to try to get this top arm over his head as well, the arm that's on the ground. Reason being is if he bends the arm in like this, he's gonna use his chest. And what we wanna do is earn what, Carrie? 
if he uses his chest, is he using the anterior components of his body? Mm -hmm. Probably, yeah. And he's cheating or compensating a little bit. What we're trying to do is ultimately neutralize his spinal control and earn shoulder blade alignment or posterior, I guess, retraction. As soon as his arms come up into this said section, he's overlapping all these anterior chain parts, partly why his posture's off throughout his body. So we have to have that under the context of that movement. Anyways, didn't mean to get too sidetracked there. When he gets into that position that he just showed us, as soon as he did that other one you were doing right, kick this here. So he's earning internal, and his glute just fired off, internal hip mobility. And again, without impact, remember how you're gonna kick at 45? So I'm gonna get you to kick at 45 degrees now, slow. Good. When he gets there, it's important that he's not letting this arch too much. So tuck his pelvis. He's gonna bring this arm up a bit more, tuck his shoulder blades back, and he's gonna bring it back in the same 45 degree angle position. Now, why would he do that? To I make sure asking. I'm translating the movement properly. Right. Without compensation. Without compensation, where particularly? The upper back. Upper back, yeah, or lower back, or the quad. <laughs> We're typically governed to just drive our legs in a linear fashion. But the unfortunate thing is when we're running and our body connects to the ground, everything is very reactionary in a what? A rotational sense. So he has to earn a new kickout regime or a new angle that he's never explored before, more or less. And when he does that kickout position, not only does he feel it here, he probably feels it in his obliques. So not only is this a functional thing, this also helps build aesthetics. So learning these concepts not only fix bodies, but they give you the aesthetic, five is good, yeah. They give you the aesthetic, I guess, goals you want as well. And then in turn, when I'm reacting to that said ground, I'm under control of that sequence or that space, and I can react accordingly to get us into the new position. So these two are very smart, and just giving them a couple hints and triggers has allowed them to explore the importance or allow them to understand the importance of these said smaller technical movements. We're just gonna keep grooving through helping Trayvon and helping everybody learn here. Stay tuned for more.